What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So we're going to be talking about Terrifier 3 in this video here today mostly and we'll also be touching on Terrifier 4 and the presumed end of the franchise and if Damien Leone has one in mind or not. But let's just jump into recapping this teaser trailer because I just got home from revisiting Terrifier 2 in theaters. I hope you guys, if you went out and saw it, enjoyed it again. And if you saw the teaser trailer, I hope you enjoyed it as well. But getting into the recap of this teaser trailer so it began inside of a bedroom and we see a snow globe it's clearly christmas eve night as we can see snow falling outside of the window and the camera pans over to a little kid sleeping with a stuffed animal but they eventually wake up to some sounds that they're hearing downstairs for about five or ten seconds while they're sitting in bed as they sit up uh from the noises that awoke them or woke them up just pondering their next moves before we see them venture downstairs to investigate whatever those noises are that woke them up that are still again ongoing downstairs the house is decorated for christmas and silent night is playing throughout this trailer the kid notices a shadow walking by in the downstairs living room where the christmas tree is where the stockings are hanging in a row above the fireplace naturally this child thinks it is santa we see the Santa in question laying gifts under the tree and the kid continues to slowly approach and then they shout with excitement, Santa! And surprise, surprise. We see Santa's sick face and that is not Saint Nick. It is Art the Clown who lifts his head up with a sick smile that only David Howard Thorne could do so well. We see Art begin to lift up an ax and turn to face the excited child after the title card saying Damien, Damien Leone's Ter Terrifier 3, we see Art enjoying some refreshments intended for, Sa for Santa Claus. Now, I don't remember if it was exactly milk and cookies or not, but it probably was. I do want to say that I loved this short look at the film. It captured the Christmas backdrop, and if this were airing as a surprise TV spot back in the day, or if we didn't have access to all the resources that we do now thanks to the internet and all the other advancements with technology, this would definitely catch a lot of people off guard if they weren't expecting this to be a Terrifier 3 promo. It just had a retro vibe that reminded me a lot of the Child's Play 2 Jack in the Box teaser, which I still think is one of the best teasers to a horror film to this day, that Jack in the Box teaser for to Child's Play 2. I think that this teaser trailer is very effective. And again, it reminded me a lot of retro trailers, teaser trailers that we've gotten. Very much so in line with what we, not that the trailer for Scream 6 was retro, but the teaser for Scream 6. It was short to the point, captured what it intended to capture, and it just ended. But I will say this. I'm holding out hope that that child is okay, <laughs> but chances are they're sadly not. Diving into what I want to talk about here as far as Damien and Leone's comments about the upcoming film and Terrifier 4. Now, shout out to Stream Punk Cinema, and I'll leave a link to your channel and the video you put up. They did an interview with Damien Leone recently and asked what we can expect from Terrifier 3. Damien said, I want to go back tonally to the atmosphere of the original, which was grittier. I want art to be more sadistic, and I want this to be the darkest one, and we'll continue to follow Sienna on her journey obviously referring to Lauren Levera's character. Apparently, during another interview, though, with Joe Blow, Damien talked about scaring off major studios who were interested in Art the Clown's third outing because who or who were interested in Art the Clown's third outing, but then backed out because the opening is so insane. Like the first five minutes of this movie, a studio would never let me film what I was planning on filming, according to Leone. He said, so mark my words, I guarantee you the first five minutes of this movie is going to be very controversial. He said this isn't even a big kill scene. So now I'm just like, well, damn, what, what are we about to, to get? Was it what we saw in this teaser trailer? I know people label these films as gore fest, and sure, they are, but I think Terrifier 2 did a better job at making the characters more than just bodies to this member. Uh, I admired Damien's desire to keep his vision intact as well, which says a lot about him as a filmmaker. We know this will be a Christmas horror film, as made evident by the teaser trailer I just had the pleasure of watching, as well as courtesy of the leaked poster that came out a few days prior. Damien Leone also had this to say today with Screen Rant when talking about Terrifier 4 and whether it will be the end. He said that's to be determined. Honestly, it's tough. I don't want to give out spoilers because I want people to just experience the movie as if it could be the last one going into 3. You never know. You never know. But the whole thing was when I started writing Terrifier 2, the only good thing was 
is that I have known the ending to this franchise, so to speak, since I was writing two. And that's the most important thing is knowing where the finish line is and how to have a satisfying conclusion, which is something a lot of these franchises do not have whatsoever as they go on way too long. Then they wind up just petering out because there's no goal. It just comes down to money and just bringing the killer back to wipe out a new slew of people, which is fantastic. It could be. I mean, I grew up with the part tens and whatnot. I love them. I still watch them. But as a storyteller, as a filmmaker, you want to you want to create a satisfying franchise, a franchise conclusion where you could just watch it from start to finish and understand the journey and the arc of characters and say, wow, that was a satisfying experience. I know what it is. And there isn't like five timelines say, well, which one do I like this and that? So, I mean, that's the goal. And I'm saying that now as like a naive artist, but you never know what's going to happen down the line. But that is the goal is I don't want to make too many of these and I want it to have a satisfying conclusion. I think, of course, with those last comments there, he's definitely alluding to what has happened to the Friday the 13th franchise. Uh, not the Friday the 13th, but the Halloween franchise. And also kind of, of course, alluding to the 80s slasher icons that kind of just kept on having these diminishing returns once they hit a certain a certain point in the franchise. And while we all can admit we love those franchises, we can understand what he means. You're just writing as you go with no end in sight because of the fact that you're having the major studios behind you now the commercial success of it all is going to constantly have you pushing to put out more with no end in sight whereas him creatively he wants an ending to occur he wants that to be reserved and maybe that's also something that would keep him away from making the terrifier franchise too much of a commercial success if it goes in well keeping it away from the appeal of bigger studios if he wants to have this creative freedom as he does right now under how he's currently tackling these movies because i like his comments his comments realistically to me sound like someone who is very passionate about the genre they love horror but they also recognize the shortcomings of a lot of the films that they love and that is what i always like to hear from fans of the genre fans who are not just bootlicking if you will but they understand certain things about things they love need to be stopped they need to also not try to do those things because they see that it also created an issue for those IPs as much as we love Michael Myers, Freddy, Jason. A lot of the out a lot of the later films, they aren't that good. They, they're just not, especially when I'm thinking of movies like Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, which I do and still enjoy. I like it. If I'm thinking about Jason X. If I'm thinking about Halloween Resurrection, just to give a, give a few examples, let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, there is a video in the description. I have links on my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'll have me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.